If you create five variables in your main script, they all exist in something called the global scope. Once your program grows, the global scope will contain more and more variables. Some will exist forever and some will have a limited lifespan. In this tutorial, you learn how to organize the scope of your variables in space and time by using namespaces. In this tutorial, you will hear the words scopes and namespaces. They are closely related, but not exactly the same thing. Scope is all about the location and the scale of things and their lifespan. And namespaces are the mechanism to achieve this in Python. Let me show you an example. Look at this code. When it is executed with the Python command, many things will happen. A global scope is created and will exist for as long as the program is running. At any given moment in the code, there is also something known as the local scope. For example, if X is printed, X will first be searched in the local scope. When a script is executed with the Python command, it becomes a top-level module. For every statement that is directly in a top-level module, the local scope is the same as the global scope. Let's inspect this. I use the dir function without arguments. This will print a list of the names in the local scope. And there are the names. All of them were created by the Python interpreter automatically, except for one. X. Notice this list is just a list. I can also get a mapping from these names to their objects. A mapping like this is called a namespace, where each name is a key with a value. And now you can actually see that name X has value 10. Let me also demonstrate that at this moment the local scope is the same as the global scope. Yep, as you can see, the local and global scope are the same. So when will they not be the same? The first example of a different local and global scope is in a function. What happens when I execute this code? Interesting. Why did that work? I print the names in the local scope before calling the function. And in the function. As you see, the name x was known in the global scope, but not in the function's local scope. But the code worked. Python searched the local scope for x and when it could not be found, it searched a higher scope and found x in the global scope. And you know what? This is also why the print function works. Python searched for the print function in the local scope, but could not find it. It then searched for it in the global scope, but this one also does not have the print function. So Python happily searches further and finds an even higher scope which is the built-in scope. Let me show you what is in there. For this, you don't even need to write a program. Just fire up the Python interpreter and run this command. And here are all the built-in objects of Python. And there is the print function. So now you know that Python has at least three scopes. Built-in, global and local. Now these scopes are the result of namespaces. The Python documentation says that a namespace is a mapping from names to objects. And most namespaces are implemented as dictionaries. And that is what you could see earlier. From now, I will not use the word scope anymore, but instead use the word namespace. So, when name x is accessed, Python will first search in the local namespace, and if it cannot find the name, fall back on the global namespace. If it cannot be found there, it will look for it in the built-in namespace. If the name cannot be found anywhere, Python raises a name error. There is no limit to the amount of local namespaces. As you already saw, functions create their own local namespace. But you can also manually create namespaces to organize your code, and one way to do this is with modules. 
I create module calculator with these two functions. I import the module in main. Now when I execute the code, do the add and subtract name show up in the local scope? No, but look who did, the calculator module. I can use it like this. And that works. Very nice. The system now has a namespace called calculator. If I would just type add, Python searches in the local scope and up and will throw a name error. I had to reference the calculate namespace and from there Python will search and find the name add. Since the calculator module is immediately imported when the program starts, the lifespan of all namespaces are practically the same. And instead of flooding the global namespace with many function names, only a single name was added, referencing the calculator module. Namespaces play a huge role in organizing code, and if you inspect the Python standard library, you will see it uses namespaces everywhere. Now, there is one more namespace missing from this picture, and that is the enclosing namespace, which plays a role when creating functions in functions. Developers who have made decorators or closures have seen the phenomenon of functions in functions. Here is an example. Function outer defines variable x and now will define function inner. I print x and now function outer returns function inner. I call outer which gives me the function inner. And finally, I can call i to execute the inner function. The interesting thing here is that the inner function was able to access state from the outer function. And by now you understand why that works. x was searched in the local namespace and could not be found. Python searched one namespace higher, which was the enclosing function namespace, and x was found. And now the picture of the search order is complete. Names will always be searched from the local namespace all the way up to the built-in namespace. And of course, you are able to insert namespaces into this hierarchy by creating and importing modules. Typically, the built-in, global and imported namespaces have a lifespan of the program lifespan. And enclosing and local function namespaces exist as long as the function is executed. Once the function returns, the next scope becomes the local scope. Now there is one thing I need to talk about and that is how to modify variables out of scope. I created function add to x that takes a and adds it to x. You have already seen that x will be searched in the global scope and this should work. But it does not. The assignment created a new variable x in the function namespace. It then tried to access x that does not yet exist in this namespace. If it was your intention to change the x of the global namespace, you must add this line. And that works again. Without the global keyword, you can access x but not reassign it. So how about removing global and changing x in place? Python cannot be tricked and this is because integers are immutable and although it looks like I'm incrementing the object value in place, under the hood a new object with value 11 is created and reassigned to x, which does not work. You can however access and change mutable objects like lists.
And that works because the function found the number variable in the global namespace and could add a number to it by calling its append method. Now, if you want to reassign variables in inner functions, you do not use the global keyword, instead you use the non-local keyword. But I have to tell you, if you can avoid it, never use global and non-local because changing variables in outer namespaces can be very dangerous. There is a much better mechanism for this. Here is a URL and I create a function that will open it. I call the function and execute the code. That works, but now the open URL function needs to upgrade the protocol to use SSL. For this I change HTTP to HTTPS. Now looking at this code, my intention is to change URL in the global scope. But you already know this will not work. And this is the point where developers are tempted to add the global keyword. I'll print URL after the function call. And although it works, something bad happened. This function now has side effects. It is changing the state of the program outside of the function. The function name lies to you. It says it opens a URL, but it does more. The first thing you can do here is pass the URL to the function to decouple it from the main script. And now I have to explicitly pass URL to the function. But this caused the behavior to change. The correct URL was opened, but the URL variable was not changed. This might be confusing, so if functions may not change global state, they must return, and here I have two options. I return the updated URL and receive it from open URL. This is already much better. But look at the function name. It is still lying to us. So shall I change the name to update and open URL? Nah, function names like that already indicate that the function is doing too much. I just create a second function. And now the open URL function will only open a URL. And then I call the new function before calling open URL. And that works. I will let you be the judge which solution is better. Different problems ask for different solutions. What is important in your decision is that the solution on the left has side effects and the one on the right does not. Actually, that is not quite true. Technically, the print statement is also a side effect, but I'll ignore that for now. Some side effects are harmless and sometimes side effects are even required. And if you want to see an example of such side effects, click on this video right now. There you learn why and how to make closures in Python.